All right, so now that we've had a chance to sit back a bit and digest all of AMD's laptop announcements from CES, it's time to talk about what it means because there's some amazing stuff and a huge mess too. But there's also a whole lot of questions, some big concerns, and also a few glaring holes in their lineup that Intel will definitely be able to take advantage of. Also, <laughs> there's some naming insanity that you need to see in order to believe it. Because trust me guys, it's really that bad. Whoa, dude, that was so rich last night. You went to the ridge? Of course, I had a secret code. What is it? It was rich. That's rich, man. That's rich. Wait a second, is that a ridge? Yep. Didn't have to go anywhere last night. Dude, that's so rich. An evolution in slim towers designed to fit your space for gaming or entertainment, standing tall or laying flat with powerful fans to scare the heat, a Gen 4 riser cable is included so you can find your own balance. That's rich for you. The talk of the town, Bridget Billow. So let's start with one of the biggest problems and that is gonna be availability. But guess what? That's nothing different from the situation in 2019, 2020, 2021, and 2022. Anyone who's tried to buy an AMD laptop knows what I'm talking about. And nothing's gonna change to that end because, well, AMD knows where the money's coming from. And that's from the data center group, which is almost carrying the entire company. So a lot of their already limited production capacity is being used for epic CPUs. So high margin products get priority, meaning GPUs and CPUs get the short end of the stick. And that's why finding an RX 7000 series card or AMD laptop will be so hard until way later in the year. And in 2023, this situation also leads to a laptop CPU lineup that's a crazy mashup of Zen 2, Zen 3, Zen 3 Plus, and Zen 4. So basically different architecture generations, all called the Ryzen 7000 series. The writing was on the wall that there wouldn't be enough capacity to fill out an entire top to bottom CPU lineup with Zen 4. So what AMD did is, is they simply updated their naming scheme in the craziest way possible. So let me explain what that looks like. So other than the usual Ryzen 3, 5, 7, and 9, the first number row denotes the processor year rather than the architecture with 7 being 2023, 8 being 2024, and so on. Then there's the segment running from 1 to 9. Though you'll notice 8 here can mean either it's a Ryzen 7 or 9. Go figure, right? But the most important number here is the third one since it'll tell you which architecture your CPU is based on from Zen 1 onwards. Then finally, there's the upper or lower zero to five segment, followed by one or two letters that determine TDP ranges running from nine watts and less, all the way up to 55 watts and higher for the HX series. Let me pause this on the screen for a few seconds so you can take it all in because it's a lot, guys. So what this leads to is a complete freaking alphabet soup of names. It's a damn mess. So technically, AMD could launch a Ryzen 9 7915U, which could be a higher end chip for premium ultra thin laptops that's based on Zen 1. Now, I'm not saying that it's gonna happen, but with this ridiculousness, it's certainly possible. I mean, AMD, if you're watching this video, like what are you guys doing by just destroying the nomenclature of the Ryzen processors? It was already great but you just made it worse. You know what they're trying to do, right? They're basically trying to log jam as many leftover cores into Ryzen 7000 series laptops as possible. I mean, look, the 7020 series gets the ancient Zen 2 cores with RDNA 2, while the 7030 series might get Zen 3, but it's tied up with Vega graphics. Meanwhile, anything branded 7035 gets a refresh of last year's Ryzen 6000 series with USB 4 tacked on for the ride. Confused yet? Well, I'm not done. If you want the latest and greatest with Zen 4, well, that's where the 7040 and 7045 series come into play, but they're very, very different from one another. The 7040 CPUs max out at 16 threads and get a new four nanometer manufacturing node. You also get access to LPDDR5, USB 4, and a new AI engine that I'll talk about a bit, and 12 RDNA 3 CUs. This series is all about maximizing battery life while delivering great performance and of course, there's the AI engine based on xDNA2 architecture. Now, obviously, AI is becoming a big deal for pretty much everyone these days. And in this implementation, it's supposed to help with processing deep learning algorithms, improve battery life, and help with more conventional processing too. And then there's the magical experiences. That's a new one. But uh, yeah, I guess it sounds great. Anyways, this is obviously there to compete against Apple's neural engine and Intel's new core VPU blocks. 
So these are the three CPUs you will end up seeing in the lineup. So the usual six and eight core layouts of the Ryzen 9, Ryzen 7, and Ryzen 5 series of HS processors. Now, AMD claims the first laptops will ship in March and will probably review a few around that time, but don't realistically expect these to be trickling to stores until June or July at the earliest. Meanwhile, most designs will only become broadly available in August and September. So the HS series covers the more performance-focused thin and light laptops. But what about the big boys? Well, AMD needed to step things up in a big way to compete against Intel's Raptor Lake HX series that also offers 32 threads, spread through performance, and efficiency cores. So say hello to the 7045 series. This is where they pull out all the stops and going basically balls to the walls, since it's basically a copy and paste of high-end desktop parts. And that means you get up to 32 threads, optional USB 4, no AI engine, and a massively cut down graphics engine. I guess that makes sense since these things are meant to be paired up with high-end discrete GPUs. So what we're looking at here are two Ryzen 9 CPUs with 32 and 24 threads, along with a 16 thread Ryzen 7 and a 12 thread Ryzen 5. Now I know everyone's gonna be interested in the Ryzen 9s, but when it comes to gaming laptops, the Ryzen 5 is probably gonna be the best option because you don't need all those cores for gaming anyways, and it'll operate at lower average TDPs. And that leads to more thermal headroom or thermal and power headroom being available for the GPU. And that's just critical for any gaming laptop. Plus, you also can expect better battery life out of these chips. Now, supposedly, we'll see laptops in February, but expect those to be super limited. And most of the 7045 series designs will be available in May, and June. So the laptops with these CPUs are pretty incredible. Uh, there's the Strix G17 that pairs the Ryzen 9 7945HX up with 140 watts, an RTX 4070, and an amazing looking 240 hertz quad HD display. ASUS is also rolling out the Zephyrus Duo 16 with the same CPU and an RTX 4090 running through a dedicated MUX switch at a maximum of 165 watts. And of course, performance has gone through the roof too since Zen 4 improves over the 6000 series in every possible way. Single thread performance gets a good bump. And of course, uh, since the 7945HX has doubled the number of processing threads, it can just dominate the 6900HX in multi-threaded workloads. Now those much higher lightly thread clock speeds along with more infinity cache and the updated architecture leads to some pretty big benefits in gaming too at least in AMD's hand-picked games. Yet, even in our testing of the desktop CPUs, the 7000 series ended up being a whole lot better than the previous generation, so I wouldn't be surprised to see something like this. So that's the high-end lineup, but what happens under that? What about the U series? You know, the processors that have done so well in the past for thin and light laptops. Folks, that's where I'm a bit worried about because there was absolutely nothing announced and it looks like the 7000 U series will be a complete mess. When they're announced, whenever they'll be, there are gonna be four, that's right, four different architectures being used. And based on this, the only way you're gonna guarantee to get the latest platform is if you buy a Ryzen 9 7000 U. Anything under that is a toss up between Zen 3 Plus, Zen 3 and Zen 2. And that's gonna be a major problem because AMD really only stepped up their laptop performance with battery life with their 6000 series. This is essentially rebranding, folks. All this is gonna do is breed a bunch of customer confusion, or at the very least, cause people to buy inferior chips thinking that they're getting the newest technology. I really hate this, and I think you should too, but let's be honest here. That's how both Intel and AMD move older chips. Remember what I said about insane? Well, this is it. There's another pretty big disappointment too, and that's with the mobile GPUs, because it might look like AMD is giving up on trying to compete with NVIDIA on the high end, but that's not really the case. Because we get this right now. Other than some rebranded RX 6000 series, there's a bunch of 7600 series based on the same core. They've got 32 or 28 CUs, eight gigabytes of memory, 32 megabytes of infinity cache, and a 128-bit bus. Oh, and there's the so-called 7700S that's nothing more than a 7600 MXT with 20 watts shaved off its maximum power. Now, how this thing got the 7700 name, I have absolutely no idea. Now, you might be asking yourselves, where are the ARCs 7900, 7800, and other 7700 series GPUs? Well, if history is any indication, they'll be announced at Computex at the end of May, so availability will be around the back-to-school season in August. 
Now, since the full top to bottom RTX 4000 series is gonna hit Intel laptops in February, it actually gives Nvidia more than half a year to dominate the gaming laptop market. And that's a problem for competition. Either way, with such a confusing lineup, a lot of key segments being taken over by rebrands of older architectures, a massive production bottleneck that'll really limit availability, and a bunch of other things, this, my friends, is gonna be a challenging year for AMD laptops. Now, I'm sure we'll see some amazing designs and even better performance, but the big question is whether or not you guys will actually be able to buy these things until a lot later this year or even at all, if last year was an indication. I just hope things turn out different because the HS and HX series look absolutely amazing. And on that note, thanks so much for watching. Let us know what you guys think about AMD's new Ryzen 7000 series lineup for the laptop segment, uh, and if you're excited about it. Curious to know your thoughts. I'm Ebar with Hyrule Connects, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.